Set and now getting underway with Heat One featuring John John Florence and Griffin Cola Pinto. John John with an opportunity with a victory to take the yellow jersey over to event number six, but he's going to have his hands full. Griffin Cola Pinto looked fantastic in the early rounds of the contest. We were robbed of the opportunity to see these two battle in the quarters last year. John John withdrawing from the event due to injury. Now we'll get our chance in pumping conditions. But what a lineup, Rich. Yeah, the surfers uh, come to the party here. Main break is turning it on. Perfect six to eight foot waves, offshore winds, and uh, well suited to both of these surfers here. And uh, well, Griff, he had the morning heat and perhaps didn't put in the best performance this morning. So he'll be looking to tidy things up and maybe an advantage already having uh, been in the lineup. He's had that warm up surf, but you know that John John Florence, he is going to be absolutely on fire out here. We know he's one of the, the top two to beat out out here at main break he's been peerless at this location in the past john florence he's just made this place his own a couple of victories at this venue and during the break it was griffin cola pinto getting things started rich yeah griff just with a big opening turn there uh, on a frothy monster you can see the swell size still hanging in there a little sleepy through this middle section as griff tries to attack this final section here and just gets obliterated ankle tapped and John starts things off with just a quick in and out. Just, uh, he was looking for a, a barrel right there. Live action. Here goes Florence. One of those beautiful big layback calves to get started. Big open face to deal with here. Again, winds through a, a big rail turn. Now setting up the inside. Hammers the section. And that's the start he was looking for. 25 and a half minutes to go. Trying to put some pressure on Griff and Colapinto and get one back on Griff. These two met in the semi-finals in Portugal. Griffin getting the jump on John there. But that was impressive stuff. Three big turns. Yeah, that was uh, more like the John John Florence that we're used to seeing out here at Main Break. Just connecting those three turns, maintaining the speed, never losing control. And that trademark swoop. So we watched the replay, a great looking way from the takeoff. And there it is, just the big carving arc. He put a little bit more of a direction change on that one. Getting right back up into the pocket. The second one was beautiful to watch. And then this third one just grinds it out. See how he just stopped on the tail there, just to make sure he, uh, he didn't nosedive. And now a deeper look at it. Gets right up high in there, both arms. Almost the double layback hack on that one, but just so compressed as he turns right up high in the pocket. And uh, the second carve as well, just powering through it. Great extension with the body. And gets to the finish here, Ron. Watch this. Gets nice and high up in the lip. Now compresses, gets all the weight on the back foot as the wave pockets out under him. Sometimes when surfers start to go to that rail and carve out on the open face, it can get a bit repetitive. John has so many variations of those moves that he can go to on the forehand. The numbers just come through. 9.5 <laughs> to kick things off against Griffin Cola Pinto. Really impressive stuff. And, uh, well, the, the young Californian now looking for a 6.27. But, yeah, just on that variation, Rich, just... What are some of the different things that, that John's able to do with those those manoeuvres to, to just give the judges something else every time he goes into the pocket? Yeah, it's that final quarter of the turn. Uh, and what John does so well is he almost disconnects the top and lower part of his body and he has uh, such a rotation between his upper and lower body that he's able to throw that final part of the turn right back into the pocket so that his nose is almost pointing back up into the lip. Uh, and more often than not, we see surfers do the carve and they almost cut down back towards the bottom half of the wave. And it, uh, it really does take a lot of technique and talent to be able to bring the board all the way around. It's almost like they're going the whole rotation of the clock. And uh, John, there's no one that really does it better. So watch this on the first turn. Pay attention to the nose of his board right back into the pocket. And then again, just hits on the gas straight into the second turn. And just look at the body torque between the upper and lower body there. Always keeping uh, the weight centered on his board here. Lean so far into it. And uh, well, almost the Hoyo, the Matt Hoy double layback hack. I'm glad they went 9.5 on this ride too. I feel like John, uh, as high scoring as his heats have been here in the past, I feel like there should have been 
a couple more 10 point rides for him. Th these are performances that have become legendary. Um, and, you know, if he can lay down surfing like this and still have more to give in a heat, there, there is a good chance we'll see him go excellent. Yeah, he could. Uh, today might just be the, the day where we see a, a perfect 10. And uh, just appreciating the technique here, the little subtleties. The point is uh, that, you know, when someone's being basically restrained on the, the judging scale based on, on what only they can do, it, it's a shame when they don't get to that perfect score. I think the same thing happened to Pipeline uh, quite a bit in that first event of the yeah. season this year. The, the guys who got the, the near-perfect numbers were, were really surfer, the only surfers that could have achieved the performance level that, that they did at that venue. So I, I think... Um, you know, John's in a great position to go excellent. Uh, Griffin Colapinto, he'll have those opportunities as well. When you think about these two guys, Rich, in personality, they're very different. John yeah. John, an introvert. He's almost an enigma. He's just, it's hard to get a, get a read on the guy sometimes. He, he doesn't like to really engage with the media too much. Um, he's just all about his surfing. Here we go, live action with Griff. Yeah, he's reticent, isn't he? Uh, Griffin Colapinto, on the other hand, Shows you everything. A, a real live wire. Just super happy-go-lucky. Very approachable and, you know, excited. But, you know, s don't mistake that, that easygoing nature for, you know, lacking that, that competitive fire and intensity. Oh, no. Well, you saw on the little uh, highlight that we played at the beginning of this heat, he has intentions of making the top five and winning the world title this year. So uh, obviously has that self-belief, but yeah, he never, we always know what he's thinking. He's very open in the, in the post-heat interviews and John in comparison, he, he sort of doesn't give too much away. You know, he says, yeah, I'm feeling good and the boards are feeling good, but doesn't really get into the depths of what's making him tick and prefers to keep that quite private. See John John sort of in that nightclub scenario, back against the wall, not really dancing. You see Griffin, shirt off, waving that above his head, <laughs> taking over the middle of the dance floor, asking them uh, to play his favourite song. Just under 20 minutes to go. John John Florence taking the early lead here, but Griffin colapinto has got time to chase him down. Jack Robinson, though, getting it done for the hometown crowd. He's down there with Kipes. Well, Jack, that was an impressive win out there. Both of you folks, both of you guys were absolutely ripping. How much confidence does I give you coming out of that heat? Yeah, we were both going for it. Um, but it was good. The waves were pumping. Um, you know, I was against a good surfer, Baron. He's so good. So, um, yeah, I knew it was going to be a good heat. Uh, and, yeah, just try to focus on myself and go get the job done. Same old, but, yeah, it's sometimes hard when the waves are super fun you, you get way too excited so just trying to keep it together <laughs> the waves are outstanding but the crowd the hometown guy you're, the crowds behind you how's that feeling yeah it's good energy everyone is uh really supportive so i'm just grateful for it and um yeah just excited to get back out there and go get a few waves we'll see you back in the quarterfinal jack robinson thank you kaipa yeah that that was huge. That was a, a big interview. If you think back to Jack's performances and his biggest results on the CT, he's just maintained this steely focus and, and tried to just really, I, I think, not let the uh, occasion get the better of him. But I think he really wants to enjoy his time here in the West and this magic run that he's got going on. And, you know, that's as animated as we've seen him in a, a post-heat interview other than the, the post-victory uh, interview that he did over in Mexico. But... That's a, an awesome sign, and it looks like Jack's really in a happy place at the moment. Yeah, and I'm thinking back to another one of the content pieces that we've played throughout the week where Jack's saying, you know, that the, the event wins are good and the, and the heat wins are good, but a lot of the motivation for him is actually putting in good performances, and when you've got, a, when you've got perfect waves at your, one of your home breaks, then, you know, that can maybe bring in a little bit of pressure as well, pressure to perform, but... Seems like Jack is, is really digging in. And, uh, well, he's, uh, he's done well. That last heat was, a, was an absolute, uh, was riveting, really. Sure was. Just on 17 minutes and 40 seconds to go here. Let's have a look at the amazing deep stats for John John Florence, powered by Hydroflask here. And as you can see, a two-time winner at this venue, 86%. That's incredible. Heat win percentage, um, average heat scores come down a little bit mm. it was excellent uh, coming into the contest so he'll, he'll do well 
with this, uh, the numbers that he's dropping at the moment to get it back on track. But uh, are still amazing numbers, even though he has uh, just fallen a, a little down on those last two. I'm just reflecting on that 9.5 and our conversation. I'm just wondering what the judges wanted to see. Uh, when I think back to the first turn, it was perfect. The second one was near perfect as well. The only thing that I can think of that they're trying to push for is some sort of an aerial or or more of a progressive element to that end section. Uh, maybe a, a big throwaway air, just something remarkable. Because look at this turn here. There's just, I mean, that is just perfection in that for that section. Uh, the wave really offered up the canvas for him to to do this brand of surfing that is just so textbook John John Florence. And here, maybe they wanted him to just go to the massive throwaway air and try and land something spectacular. And that's what they're pushing for to, to hold for that 10-point ride. Maybe it's coming right now. Florence up again. Wave number three, first section. Hangs on the rail. Nice carve to get started. This one's starting to flatten out a little bit. But he'll line up the end section and give it everything he's got. Kicks on that tail, not as good backup wave though. It's yeah, a good not as solid wave. as his first for sure, no. but at this point, just looking to finish that one off. But uh, he'll be in a great position now. Pressure's really going to be on Griffin going into the uh, the second half of this heat. 16 minutes remaining here. Griff needs to be a little bit careful that he doesn't just start waiting for a 9.5 as we watch the replay of John Florence here. Uh, this first section, a nice extended carve. Uh, and you, as you said, Ronnie, it gets a little bit sleepier, slightly slower. More uh, control carve for the second. And the third gets the hit. And what I meant by that is, uh, you know, Griff, you can end up waiting for something that won't come. And you've got to stay with the heat. And you've got to stay with the rhythms of the sets. If you just start going, oh, I'm going to wait for the biggest wave of the whole day, uh, it might not come. And, uh, well, if John only gets about a seven here, then then Griff, you know, he could still get that score with 285. So, um, you know, he's obviously looking for a particular type of wave. As we look at the uh, ultra slow-mo here of, of John. Just uh, this ghost model, Pizel. Board, he's just found something really special in this particular model here. We know it's got that really pulled in narrow tail that just allows John to knife into these little sections here. A little bit of fin release on that one. His toes and heels almost hanging over the back half of the edges. The tail of his board there, a lot of forward foam up front. But so strong, isn't he? <laughs> Another excellent heat already. There's still 14 and a half minutes to go. He's dropped an eight point ride. And Griffin's after a huge combo already. Looking for two waves and a total of 17.5. Earlier today, uh, you know, Really stressful times. We found out there was going to be a walkthrough. We didn't know the circumstances, and there was fear that after having an early heat yesterday that maybe John had gone free surfing, and we were thinking, oh, no, has he got again. another injury? Um, I saw Kolohe and Dino last night, and I was thinking, well, there's, surely it's, there's nothing wrong with him, you know, but, um, you know, it was a sad result either way. But, yeah, unfortunately, Kolohe forced to withdraw, wasn't well enough to, to turn up and compete in that first heat. Battling a, a stomach bug of sorts. And John John Florence got the walk through and finds himself here. And I guess if anyone in that round were, was going to get it, you know, it's kind of fitting that John John gets that opportunity after missing out on surfing in the quarterfinals here last year. Yeah, it's almost poetic justice, really, isn't it? But uh, really unfortunate for Kolohe. He would have been looking forward to that matchup. And surfing really good in this event. And this is his money event. Yeah. You know, he's been so consistent here the past three years, Kolohe and Dino. So wishing him all the best. Sad to not see him here, but he is uh, having a, a great campaign on the championship tour this year. And he'll be back for G-Land. 13 minutes remaining here. Griffin Colapinto now really wants to make this uh, this next wave count, holding onto this priority for some time now as our surfers duck under a bigger set on the outside. Oh, look at this. The ocean's starting to warm up again. Some beautiful lines coming through to main break. Will Griffin be able to get out to this one? No. Ops over it. John wants to look at it, though. Yeah, John can afford to take a, a chance at some of these insiders. Had a really good look at that one. Saw all that foam on the face and, and opted out. 
didn't see more than eight points on that one. 12 and a half minutes remaining here. Florence with a very healthy lead. And Griffin Colapinto with a lot of work to do. To the quarterfinals here at the Margaret River Pro. Stop five on the CT. John John Florence at the moment. Getting his first opportunity out there with the jersey today. He had the walkthrough this morning. We were robbed of the opportunity to see him do brilliant surfing out here at main break once again. But he's making up for it at the moment. A 9.5 on his second ride. On his third, he banked an eight. And Griffin Colapinto yet to, to lock in anything of substance. And he's after a big two-wave total of 17.5. He's out there with priority. And will be desperately trying to make this important next ride count as we see him lining something up on the outside now let's see what he can do the 23 year old draws off the bottom up into this first section a nice big swoop of his own tight critical in the bowl just a transition turn there is this wave going to give him that opportunity on the inside to deliver something dynamic well, he does well. It's a oh, tricky no. section, but he nose dives at the end there. He was on his way to a healthy number. And he still might get some decent points. That was a very committed first turn. Yeah, the opening carve was uh, was beautiful there and, and, and starting to match John John for, for power and rail. And uh, just as you mentioned, Ron, unfortunately couldn't convert the final turn always leaves a bit of a disappointment uh, in the judge's eye when they don't get to the finish well, let's have another look at this first turn it was beautifully placed oh just a perfect canvas for for griffin just to grind through this beautiful open face carve i love how he just set the rail again for the next turn and uh through here couple little cut downs and then this final turn here it looked like he was almost in two minds whether to just go for the extended floater but getting nice and low off the bottom here and just have a look at the carve just using all that extension in the body and uh, tucking that back leg in keeping the energy and the momentum the acceleration moving forward yeah it's going to be hard to, to match those big numbers of john's because he got that completion this end section didn't really serve much up for him it was a gnarly little convergence of the the two waves coming together and it, it actually didn't stand up that tall that wave really tapered off mm, maybe a little air rev at the at the end could have been a better option than than sort of just getting stuck there was a little fluffy uh landing pad down there we've i've seen griffin go for airs on a wave like that you know a million times and make them I mean, a, a really different version of uh, that big opening carve we saw from John John. He was getting a, as you would say, Rich, a bit more of an acute angle on it. And Griffin ripped his carve from the top right to the bottom. You know, yesterday we had challenging conditions with a lot of bump on the face, not that many clean walls. Today it's glass here, it's a dry track, and these guys are driving into these turns as hard as they possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we might just have another quick look at, at John's right here and and uh, break down the subtleties. As you mentioned, Ron, there was there was a couple of different options here. And uh, this is the beauty of John. He's able to mix this turn up and, and make it different. If, uh, if we pause it just here, I, I just want to talk about the pathway first too. So the option was to come up here and draw a long, big carving arc down, almost a cut down. But instead, John does a, a, a nice acute turn up in the pocket here. And there's something that I want to highlight between that upper and lower body if we roll the tape john just uh driving here so he's now shifting his weight onto his uh heel side rail perfect positioning and uh if we stop it right here okay so john's shoulders they're still pointing down this way always pointing down the line and that's unique but his lower body is pointing this way so it's that rotation at the hip and the hinge area there and that is something that john does he changes it up and it allows him to do that really acute turn and uh, it just spices it up instead of going for that big longer arc and, and that, that's the artillery that he has definitely whips that board too if you keep rolling now how quickly he gets that board back but finishes that turn right at the top of the wave so he's able to then go into the next without losing any momentum although he fully committed to that opening move yeah at this point right here he's just setting that rail again hasn't lost one ounce of speed and uh, it's on with the show man just driving so hard off the bottom too but changing 
where he places that bottom turn so he can maintain all that speed for those big rips off the top as we go back to live action. And Griffin has broken combination. He had a 7.8 on that last ride. And now he's setting up for maybe a big air on the finish here. Loading up. The section stands up and he goes the full rotation and rides out. Woo! What an effort. Putting it all on the line. And John Job Florence behind him. He's wondering what the hell is going on. <laughs> well, John would have heard the, the crowd erupt. You could see him. You could see him just poising, getting ready for that moment. And, uh, you know, Griffin's just gone, what do I need to do here? How am I going to get back into this heat? How can I get the win? I'm going to go high. I'm going to go to the air. That's what it's going to take. Well, best air we've seen in the event, for sure. There hasn't been that many great opportunities. I think at this point, Rich, he's going, well, there wasn't much in that first turn. So he started telegraphing this thing. Yeah, you can see the stance white and the front uh, foot just edges up the board and geez, he covered some distance there. And we haven't seen many uh, surfers tackle this final section over the rock shelf. And uh, Griff gets the big rotor, completes it. Well, this is, you know, a really tricky wind and section. It's ideal for the air, but you know, there is that danger of losing contact with your equipment. He just hung on beautifully. He's had some big individual moves in his career, and this is another spectacular move under pressure too. Well, the wave before, it started well and didn't finish well. This wave was a little bit sleepy at the start, but finished with a, with a real intense maneuver. So uh, the judges could go anywhere with this. I'd love to see it up in the excellent range because that was excellent surfing, really high risk. Yeah, it's one turn, though. I mean, the first turn, um, really, by his standards, was garbage. Um, but the numbers are coming through. The judges have been saying the whole time they will throw big numbers at, at high-risk, committed moves, especially on that end section. And Griffin has dropped a beauty, an 8.83 average from the panel. OK, so take the first half of Griffin's wave prior, the 7.8, and then take the last half of Griffin's wave, the last wave, and there's your 10-point ride. So that's exactly what they wanted to see. They wanted to see that beautiful, big, committed rail surfing outside with the big air at the end section, and uh, there's, the, there's the story. Oh, my mass must be off, because if you're <laughs> saying uh, that Griffin's <laughs> previous ride with the big turn at the start, plus the, the big turn on that last one... About 13 and a half points. He's in the teens, mate. <laughs> But uh, no, that was awesome stuff. And really, I think just with the, the messaging that came out from the, the judges panel this morning, it was always going to go that high. Uh, it was the best air that we've seen in the contest this year. And it couldn't have come at a better time. And that's something that Griffin's gotten a lot better at is performing in these clutch moments. He needed it to really keep his head straight over there in Portugal on his way to his first ever CT win. There's a lot to see here as we dive into the Harvey Norman heat recap. John John Florence start with the bang, still the highest score of this heat so far. Oh, just opening with such strong manoeuvres. Two beautiful rides here in the excellent range. <laughs> just surfing just on point. We've seen it time and time again, just John using the rail, using the power, the flow, ticking all the boxes with what the judges want to see. And uh, good committed surfing. All the way through to the inside. Gets a little spicy there with some tail release. But then the second half of this story is all about Griffin Colapinto on a beautiful looking wave here and uh, bringing his version of the, uh, the power carve right up into the pocket. This was the one that went a little, little bit sleepy on the inside. But this last wave just attacking this final section takes to the air, lands the best aerial manoeuvre we've seen in the event thus far and perhaps uh, a good sign for things to come just under two minutes this heat is coming down to the wire he's still got work to do though needs an 8.68 and here he goes now nice swoop off the top might get a bit more room to, to fit in a couple more turns on this ride driving up into the lip Banks' section, it's a tricky one. He likes the feel of it. 8.68 though, is it gonna go there? He's selling it, he's selling it hard and uh, John just having a little look. Perhaps just uh, seeing whether Griffin got to the finish of that one. I, my gut's telling me it's not the 8.68. I just don't think it had that moment where I was just moved and overcome. Mm. Well, the comparison 
It was always going to be what John, John Florence did, but he is doing something that we haven't seen too much of. We saw Jack Robinson find a pit out there before in the round of 16, and John John manages to get some vision as well. He's trying to better an eight here, and he might go for an air of his own. The section, though, lets him down, but he does finish it off. Just under a minute to go, and Griffin Colapinto might run out of time here. He's on his way back to the takeoff zone, but John Florence... He has done a, did a lot of work early. He put the pressure on Griffin. You've got to give him props. He fought back in a big way. He dropped a couple of excellent scores of his own. What a heat. Oh, this is just, uh, this is what finals day is all about. And, you know, John may even better his eight-point ride here. So it's going to be a, a, a huge finish with the numbers. 8.33 for Griffin on his previous ride. Not enough. Still after an 8.68. Might even need more. Still waiting on a score for Florence to come through. Well, Griffin, uh, John John just saying, you're going to take to the air, I'll take to the pit. It's a long tube ride. Well, the heat is winding down, wow. and what a performance from John John. You know, I think uh, yesterday he performed pretty well, but, you know, by his standards, not one of his best heats here at main break. Missed the opportunity to surf in the round of 16. Oh, I think he actually would have been really disappointed not to get out there with Kolohe and battle. But he earned his place in the quarters just based on, on his performances here over uh, many years now. And he's put together another special one. Oh, he has indeed. And uh, we're still actually waiting for a, a final number here to drop in for John John. He may see that 17-point uh, total actually get up into the 18th and, and have a look at Griff's total there, 17. That is, uh, you know, he should be proud of that performance. That was great surfing. And uh, unfortunately just comes up uh, against an informed John John Florence. Yeah, well, so that's, hard to beat. It's the second highest heat, point, uh, heat score of the, uh, the day so far, Griffin Colapinto's total there. And John's made a habit of this, you know, uh, upsetting people when they're putting together one of the heats of their lives. And there are the results. But just really solid start from the two-time world champion. And he is into the semis once again here at Margaret River. We'll take a quick break when we return. Matt